Hello War of the Visions fans, I'm Jackie Fox and today I'm going to be testing out Shurika on a variety of teams. I'm going to be showing off a total of 7 teams in this video, but as we usually do with our team testing videos, I am also going to be testing a total of 10 teams. So there are going to be 3 right here up front that I do not have on my list. They just kind of disappeared, I couldn't pull them, I couldn't find them, I'm missing some of the units for them, so I couldn't test them. But I have tested 7 out of 10. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the All Win team. This was first on offense with 4.3 stars. It did okay on defense with 1.4 defense, but it's not particularly amazing in that respect, especially since there's some pretty strong ice and ice damage dealers out there that know they can pick on this team pretty effectively. But if you get your choice of matchup and you can match up into Earth, it is an incredibly consistent way of destroying Earth teams. This one actually was a little bit more complicated than I expected it to be, and Dialdo here has some pretty impressive HP, but still, uh, I don't think it's going to be a major surprise that we're going to take this victory home with us. This is also the team that I was showing off in my previous video. I just wanted to mention them on here, since they do rank well on offense as our number one offensive team, I thought they were relevant to note, so I went out and recorded some fresh new footage for you of them in action. Now that I've kind of figured out how I want to play all three of them on this map, this is definitely the team I've put the most effort into figuring out at this point. Whereas a lot of the other teams in this video I'm still kind of experimenting with, and you know, sometimes they're going to underperform, but at least for this video especially, I tried to show you pretty much 100% of the footage that I've recorded, and that's going to mean that there's a lot of footage, and this is going to be a pretty long video, but I wanted to show you wins, losses, just everything that I matched into so that you could understand exactly how each one of these teams would perform, both their weaknesses and their strengths. And I don't think it's going to be, again, a surprise to anyone that the strength of this team is being able to deal with Earth incredibly well. You're also going to see the rare Shurika healer moment, where she walked up in range of her allies with her heals, which are fairly long range themselves, but not in range for damage. So she decided to heal up Veritas of the Heavens for us. Now, this time she's likely not going to heal Dario, instead going for the KOs. Because now she is finally in range for damage. As she prefers to be. <laughs> Fire, especially with its newer units, is looking pretty tough right now. But this team has a decent enough matchup into Soul, and has some ways of dealing with Sephiroth as well. So as long as Summer Resnick doesn't steal this from me, we should be able to take them. But this is a pretty clean and even matchup in a lot of ways. So, you know, it's, it's going to come down to how effective their healer is, because they can really steal a match from you. And I, I think we have the advantage here, so it's kind of Summer Resnick's to lose in some ways. It's also good to point out here that Soul is kind of like a slightly out-of-date version of Shurika. You have kind of the same anti-physical HP barriers, damage, ways of inflicting additional damage. With Soul, that was through poison, but with Shurika, it's through the, uh, the auto-engage follow-up hit. We did not land that move. Our least accurate unit had trouble hitting their most evasive unit, probably their most evasive unit. It is kind of the trend to throw either Winter Coat or Black Garb on Sephiroth, depending on how you want him to play. Uh, Winter Coat being more evasive, but Black Garb being a little bit more offensive.
But we did get the re-raise removal, and that's going to be important later. I wouldn't say that was a wasted attack, because it still essentially took t one turn away from him in, in terms of his ability to take damage. That being said, this is pretty close, and Chaotic Darkness, this old Skull Goatsy is probably going to mess us up. Uh, they didn't get any additional poison on that, and we... Oh my gosh, she did so much damage to him. Dario has healed himself up pretty well. So there is a chance she's probably going to bring Soul back to life and give herself a re-raise. Meanwhile, we are going to get slaughtered, so let's see how that goes. Double curse, Veritas of the Heavens is down, Soul is back up. The tempo of the fight has changed quite a bit, but it's still almost trivial to take out Soul with Shurika. So that worked out fairly well. Good trade. You can have one back if we can take two from you. And hopefully we're going to get the Berserk here. Uh, Dario is really good at berserking people with that attack. So there we are. So here I'm going to change out some of the equipment on my units and switch this over to a plus four guardians crystal. This should give a noticeable bonus in stats for Veritas of the Winds. We're also going to be switching over to the Sky Ripper and trying out the Terra Shield. So this is going to be a really interesting combination that's going to give him a pretty unique form of courage. These two are fairly similar. Notice I'm losing a lot of accuracy here, but they also both have area effect effects, at least for this Veritas as well, and similar levels of pierce attack. So they are pretty similar, but I'm going to try out the Sky Ripper. I think that AoE piercing rate 20 is going to be really powerful for a lot of his most slapping skills, so that's going to be really great. I'm doing something a bit different with this one, something that has been requested by the fans in the comments, and I want you people to know that I see you and hear you. It's not always easy to do content like this, but I have the character, I have multiple of her, I have her during, I have her usable in different archetypes and team formats, so why not try to play as many of the teams in a team data video as I possibly can and use that as a showcase video instead of just showing you a spreadsheet. Hey, I know, I think it's a great idea too, and the stars have aligned to bring you one of those today, so I hope you'll stick around for the whole thing and really show me that it's worth making, taking this much effort and putting it into a single concept for this game, because... Boy, do we have a lot of team data to go through today, even compared to usual. So let's dig into it. As you can see from the data, a big part of the overall score handicap for teams that placed 8th through 10th was caused by missing data. In the cases of 9th and 10th place, weighting the data doesn't change that much, and both teams are barely used. I mean... There were a lot of days where no one was using them, and on the days that they were being used, it was like one person on offense and maybe defense. But for 8th place, Summer Resnick, Strategist Aldoa, and Shurika, this is simply because Summer Resnick wasn't available for day one of the data. And I kind of feel bad handicapping them for that, especially given that when you correct for this, this team comes closer to a 3rd to 5th place performance. This effect only really skews the overall data, I did take it slightly into account and penalize them just a little bit on their overall score for having missing data, but their ratings for fourth place on offense and second place on defense is a better indicator of how good they are generally. All 
All right, so let's move on a little bit. This is the data more generally for all you nerds out there that want to check that out. Again, key partners, Summer Resnick, Luciel, Folka even, Veritas of the Waters, anyone, I mean, Sodaly, Lena, anybody who can bring re -Razor Courage, Gilgamesh, Shadjastoldoa, Wing Sephiroth, Helena, uh, for bringing in more damage, Dario, Veritas of the Heavens for more wind. All of these are great characters with her, and we'll be testing a variety of them throughout this video. Of all the teams that I didn't get a chance to test, this one because of Luciel, this one came in first. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that an all-mage team has emerged from this, especially the way it was looking early on. But I'm also kind of not surprised. Held us back in the spotlight. Number one overall, first on defense with two defends on average. Number three on offense. The... Gilgamesh variant of this team, second on offense, 4.1 stars, fifth on defense, 1.8 defense on average. This team came in fourth overall. And then all the way back in eighth place, we have Summer Resnick and Strategist Aldoa. This team had done really well earlier, still came in second on defense with 1.9 defense and fourth on offense with 3.9 stars, but there was some pretty healthy competition for them as well. So that kept them just out of the top. So let's check out this team next. This is going to be a mostly katana with some black mage style team. We're going to be starting this out with a level 99 shurika. You can see that Dario is pretty decent here, around 15,000 HP, 1500 magic. And Sephiroth around 10,000 HP, but getting close to 1900 attack all doing fairly fast. Now, really, I should have pulled the TMR here, but this team came in third overall, third place on defense, fifth place in offense, averaging 3.9 stars and 1.8 defense. And naturally, it is one of many teams to do pretty darn well against opposing AP generation teams, this being kind of a bog standard one. Like, I'm just saying this is pretty good, pretty trendy, it's a pretty solid team for the three of those characters, until somebody brings Veritas of the Heavens TMR to the field. In which case, you're really going to start having problems. But you've seen me pick on this team for well over a month now, so or teams very similar to this one, so this should be no surprise to many of my regular viewers. If you're not one of my regular viewers and you're thinking, that's a pretty tough team, Fox, how, do, how are you beating that so consistently and how have you been doing it for a long time? You should definitely like and subscribe. And keeping in mind that I am a particularly foul-mouthed Fox at times, YouTube likes to demonetize my content. So please click that bell so you make sure you get notifications when I post new content because it doesn't always happen the way you'd want it to. They're taking a little less damage than we are so far, but our heavy hitter has lined up only with one of them. She did pretty decent damage to Sephiroth, so we're kind of ahead in damage and a little bit ahead in turn order. A Berserk here could be really meaningful, but look at that damage. I'm not... Oh, well, he healed back, so I was going to say he might be just wrecked, but um, no, with that much HP, that is a very meaningful Berserk. Oh, oh, do we have the re-raise? We do not have our re-raise up. Damn. Well, they retaliated by taking one of our units out. They did have re-raise on their Sephiroth, but we've got him down to that, which should be really easy cleanup. Yep, double KO here from Shurika. So now we have a 2v1 with their Cypher. Should be pretty easy to overwhelm him with damage. He doesn't have any sort of a stop loss. He does have man resistance, and even though Shurika is a woman, she is resisted by man resistance, uh, as is Sephiroth, even though he's... Uh, Arguably not very human. And that is uh, what man is supposed to mean. 
Dang, uh, Cypher is doing a really good job of hanging in there. He is getting to the point where enough of his stuff is wearing off that Shurika is dealing pretty decent damage to him. She locked him down, but then she made the mistake of getting in range. It wasn't that big a mistake though, because she was still able to clear out the fight without being taken out, because she still had plenty of resistance left herself. This one is all ice, and I mean, I guess I have a fire unit, but this, uh, I can already tell you this one's looking bad. The tide has perhaps turned out of my favor. Furthermore, that, uh, that feels more like a wasted buff versus this team. Again, while it is a powerful strategy, you really have to know who you're going up against or you've kind of wasted an important buff turn. That's probably going to result in her not getting her HP buff up. There's a couple other useful things on that buff too, but that's really the big part. Also, so far we haven't really seen a way to get some sort of extra survivability mechanic on Shurika. That's something that some of the later teams are going to do especially well, and that's going to make her a lot safer. But there is almost no safe scenario for her leaning or lining up into Gilgamesh the Scourge Breaker because he can just very easily one-hit her from full health, even with all of her buffs up. Dario's aura does help that, though, but uh, often maybe not enough to keep her alive too well without some sort of a survivability mechanic. Also, we're seeing them just really not taking damage even from our fire unit. That's a real bad sign. We did manage to do some damage with Shurika and curse two of their units. They do like to heal a lot. This whole team likes to heal a lot, so that's kind of annoying and kind of great that we have Curse in here. That might help. Oh, oh, Dario barely hung in there, though. That's good. What you gonna do, A2? Ooh, well, that finally finished off Dario. Oh, oh, that follow-up hit took out, oh my god. Well, uh, we're down to my fire unit. It's the only person who's kind of taking damage from them at a reasonable pace. But he's not really able to deal it back. Uh, like I said when I was initially talking about one Wing Sephiroth, he's not really a DPS. He's more of a breaker damage dealer. He can build up into damage. But he's not the biggest damage boy himself. Even into the element he counters, um, can be a little rough. As you can see, Shurika's stats have improved a bit, getting up to level 110 from 99. But her skills and all should be about the same as they were before. It's just taking me a while to build her up. Speaking of build up, a uh, Gilgamesh with potential courage and re-raise is kind of terrifying. But I think we do have more of a chance against this one than maybe we did the last all ice team. Handling Gilgamesh all by himself though can be a real chore and they have really great units to back him up so I'm, I'm not sure we're gonna get this one. But hey, never count yourself out. Sometimes it is good to know when to concede but I don't know, I think we got a chance at this one. I think it probably depends a lot on their vision card setup. <laughs> and to be fair, our vision card setup is set up a bit more for Katana than it is Black Mage. But that is something that this account does 
you know, both of those niches. So I've been sure to pick up a lot of the overlap cards at the very least. So I have a pretty good vision card set up for this team. Looks like the slaughter's only going to be hitting Gilgamesh. Oh no, we also hit Sephiroth and curse them both. That's going to be really, really handy. Got our terror bringer up. She can't, well, I mean, there's nothing to heal. He hasn't taken damage yet. Corscution did some damage. We're gonna get counter slaughtered. Tried, he hit the whole team. He did not curse the entire team. That's 75% curse resistance that Shurika is rocking came in handy there. But really nothing that can save her from a big hit from Gilgamesh. Ah. Well, this whole match is cursed at this point, with the exception of Luciel, who is actually the most cursed character in this game. <laughs> But uh, some quick thinking managed to keep my Sephiroth from dying there. We, <laughs> we won the Sephiroth v Sephiroth matchup. But some guaranteed hit led Gilgamesh right to my doom. Whoop. Slightly lower in the offensive stat here not as much magic in this build and the vision cards are a little bit all over the place very high offensive stats here for helena but not necessarily the highest hp this team came in six out of ten averaging 3.6 stars and 1.7 defense which is decent but yeah, just under top 5 material, really. We're going to be taking on a lot of ice with this team, too, apparently. So, ice and earth. But <laughs> More Gilgamesh, ladies and gentlemen. Gilgamesh the Scourge Breaker has become the Scourge of Wotav. How about that? I mean, I can, I, I am getting to the point where I can beat him more and more consistently, but it, it is difficult. And I think this team might struggle with it. But we are building up to a lot of unit attack resistance on Aldoa, at the very least. Shell, as well. So that should give her a decent chance of at least getting past uh, Seeking Plume. Hold on, not making a move there. Okay, it didn't do that great against Seeking Plume, but we're trying. Uh, also, though, she is silent, so that's real bad luck for us. Thanks, Mont. Uh, A2 healing the team up. Big damage. Two out of three down. Re-raise, though. What can Helena do? She can probably heal herself up, back up, but she's not going for that. Oh, so close to being able to take those guys out, but just not getting it. Uh, oh, they're doing so much damage to Shurika too. Yikes. Alright, that's, that's the end of that one too. So yeah, a lot of these teams are going to be pretty bad into Gilgamesh. Um, at least until we get to some of the teams that have some form of stop loss for Shurika. That's going to be pretty rough. It's also especially hard for a level 99 Shurika to deal with fully level 140 whalier teams that tend to have Gilgamesh. 
I mean, because if you have him, you probably have other really good characters to go with him. I haven't seen a lot of teams where it was like, oh wow, Gogamesh is actually the only good unit on here. I don't know why that is necessarily. Maybe there's some particular reason, like, Gogamesh was released after a particularly large event that got all of the regular folks to spend all of their viz on whatever was available at the time for fear of missing out, like One Wing Sephiroth and Evan Children Cloud, even building up the free Tifa. Coming out directly behind that, I guess, maybe made it a little bit more poignant that only the people who had money in the bank to spend on a character were able to pull out and get Gilgamesh. And man, as good as Advent Children was as a collaboration, it does in retrospect feel like bait to the point where no one really had the viz to spend for Gilgamesh. I wonder I wonder how much like money Gilgamesh specifically made for War of the Visions. And look, I'm not mad. You know, I am going on a bit of a tangent here because Ah, man, you can only say so much about what's basically the same team, but multiple variations. Um, but, like, you know, he's the god of this world. I, I hope they make some money off of him. I just, I just wish I could, uh, I wish I could play too, guys. <laughs> I wish I had a Gilgamesh to test with. I could have tested at least a couple more teams that way. They've got their first KO. We're spreading our damage pretty evenly around their team, which kind of means an AoE skill could start wiping them down. Oh, we got a sleep and a KO. Okay, that's a good combo. And we are keeping ourselves alive. This is a fully physical team, so although as Aura is keeping everyone around her safe, and that can be a way to keep Shurika from needing as much of a stop loss in the way of courage or re-raise, but it doesn't really do very much into that magic matchup that she's worst into, especially with Gilgamesh. But what happens if they have a Shurika too, and our ice tank goes up against some firepower? Well, this is a pretty diverse team. Like, it is pretty strong in general. It doesn't necessarily have elemental weakness in the same way that a lot of teams do. So I think we'll be able to deal with this pretty, pretty well. Specifically, it might be a little bit of trouble that there's no real, like, huge magic resistance here for Shurika. But, as I have said before, if Helena can get her LB off before Shurika comes in to her for damage and can get her Reflect up, then, I mean, I'm pretty sure Helena can just auto-KO Shurika. I've even seen it happen a, a couple of times so far. I think there was even an instance of this happening in the last video. And hey, maybe it'll happen again. Really glad she didn't wake Sephiroth up right at that moment. That could have been annoying. Good to see him miss a turn. Especially since I was a little bit intimidated about how he might match up into Strategist Oldoa. Very rare... Uh, I think it might be one of the only times you will ever see Summer Resnick doing damage. But there it is. Man, didn't hit him hard with the LB, but we did hit him. And now we've put them right back to sleep afterwards. Helena is running some serious sleep control on this team. Back up with re-raise. And she was having a little bit of trouble dealing with magic, but we're we're dealing with well, I would say we're dealing with physical damage quite well, but Sephiroth can't stay awake to do physical damage to us, so maybe that's not quite the point. Also, it looks like we were, our healing power is taking a hit. That's probably not going to be enough of a heal for Helena to stay in the game. Nope. 
So we have lost our first character. We have their healer up, but I don't think the the healing. Oh nope. Probably Summer Resnick was low enough that she felt like healing. I didn't think she'd heal for that. Got some damage in, but I really think we're in trouble. Ah, because like when when they have a healer and you lose a character. Three DPSs, three units doing damage can maybe overwhelm a healer's capacity. But once you only have two attacking characters to their three and they have a healer still alive, uh, it's really hard to overwhelm that. But I do like this team. It wasn't one of the best. It hasn't been one of the best any any time I've tested it and no matter who I've tested it against. But it's pretty popular, it's pretty reliable, and it's pretty interesting. It seems to work really well into physical, so this is an all physical team. Let's see how that works. That should do a lot better because it's playing into both Oldoa and Shurika's strengths. Strengths which should be able to easily overlap to build up a, a resistance to these physical units. Also, we have at least one of our units has an elemental advantage on Mont. I don't know if, especially a level 99 or maybe even 110 Shurika can one-hit Ash and Mont the same way that I've shown you in other parts of the video, especially maybe on this team. But we'll see what we can do. Got Courage off of Mont, so that might actually make it easier. But we couldn't get Mont in range. Looks like we got Courage off of Cloud too, because that probably shouldn't have taken him out, but it did. Okay, attacking my non wound characters. Got some CT back from Helena and full HP restore from Ultoa. Uh, he kept the chain going, but we got a re raise and didn't take much damage from Ultoa. Aldo was applying a lot of debuffs, healing herself back up. And putting some damage on the remaining boys. Dang. So yeah, no, Aldo is really good into teams like that. Really good into like all physical matchups such as that. And you can see the move up to 110 has definitely improved attacking power by a bit. However, I've been seeing a number of teams like this. I've been seeing a lot of people using Sunil Evasion. I've actually seen a lot of like mono dark Sunil Evasion, where it's uh, Sunil, Ketone, and Cypher. Those teams are pretty tough to beat, even with a really accurate team. And unfortunately, this Shurika is not built the most for accuracy of the ones that I've been showing you. I'm not saying that this team couldn't be more accurate, or that Shurika on this team couldn't be more accurate and maybe deal with this team, but as this particular iteration of this team is built, I don't think we can deal with, uh, with Evasion very well, so this is probably going to go kind of poorly. But we'll see what happens. Well, nope, that's a really bad sign. If we can't even hit Ash and Mont, then we're probably going to be unable to hit anyone on their team. Oh no, two characters can't hit Ash and Mont. That's just doubling down on my bad feelings and bad vibes. Oh damn, Helena's silenced? This is just bad news city. Clementine removing the wider AoE resistance. King of the Dead probably going to finish these two off. Oh, okay. Okay. Uldo is still in this. Helena also still in this because of re-raise. Not doing a lot of damage to Mont though. We did hit him. He's the one we should be able to hit most of all. But we did hit him. 
Looks like Shurika can also hit him, but uh, didn't do enough damage to overwhelm him. Did pin him back, though. He's not going to be able to gang up on her with his friends, but uh, the friends are more evasive. Like, she's not even trying to hit the other units here. Even though she has multiple targets, she's not even trying to hit them. Yeah, see? Even though um, Sunil is closer, she just knows she can't do it. So she's not going to do it. She's not even going to try. Arguably, I think she should try. You know, I think that might be an... Eh. I don't know what else it might mess up to fix that with the AI, but that feels like an AI mistake, personally. But, uh, yeah. I mean, even it's like a 3% chance. Come on, take it. And now, let's see how that team does with the level 140 Shureka. In this team, we can see that Shureka is now above 10k HP and just above 1500 magic, but 124 accuracy and 112 agility as well is pretty good. And for this team, I can show them off a little bit in guild battle. And just look at the wide variety of teams that this formation can take. This is a really good combination of units for catching the meta off guard, especially things that are more physically based or more physically oriented. Just a whole wide variety of teams. Although my Sephiroth defense team, the Katana defense team, seems to have done well. And another, and a Sephiroth Lucio. Gilgamesh, no surprise there. Oh, there's also a light team that did really well. Okay, I definitely want to see that footage. Especially since they're using Jaden, that's interesting. I want to see how they use him for advantage on this map, because he can be a pretty impactful character when he is on a map that really suits what his abilities can do for his party and partners. All right, so this team is really good in limited. You can see a little bit more magic here, although a little less speed, but I'm running for higher attack. Really low HP, unfortunately, here, but decent magic. And HP is not particularly great with Sephiroth, but we do have fairly high attack. 
This team is particularly good in limited though, especially in 270 limited like we have for guild battle right now. And I will be showing you a little bit of how this team performs in guild battle a bit later. There are a few teams here that I have been able to test in guild battle, so there is going to be footage from that map as well in here, just so you get an idea of how these teams work on multiple maps. Okay, now that I've got my equipment picked out, this team came 5th out of 10. It didn't get any special honors, but it did get an average 3.5 stars and 1.7 defends, which is pretty mediocre, but not bad. One of the things that this team has going for it, though, is that you're going to see that Shalza can give either one of these two characters courage. We're gonna see it happen here. And f to me, especially with her auto healing through attacking type abilities, I think that Shurika gets a lot better when you give her the ability to re-raise, but maybe even more so courage. So, I really think that while there aren't as many people using Shalza with her, especially because there's a lot of newer and higher cost units that do similar things or maybe better things, Shalza is still a very, very good unit and is basically Limited's version of Luciel anyways. Using her in more general, like, open cost guild battle isn't going to be as good because you're giving up on 30 cost there, you should probably probably at this point have 300 cost units if not at least like modern 90 cost units so she is going to cost you a bit there but she's still going to be able to do some things that other teams just aren't going to be able to do and giving shurika a form of courage is one of those things and is a really great way that she excels for this team that being said we have really cleaned up this fight and haven't much needed the help but uh this one i actually started my recordings at t level 110 so you're not seeing any really low level stuff here that said as expected shurika is having a little bit of trouble dealing with their mage but no real trouble taking him out Another highly physical team. This one is built for, I think this is like class match numbers. So I'm playing with the uh, limited guild battle cost restriction. They're playing with the class match cost restriction. Um, but I think we've got a pretty big advantage. We have an elemental advantage, at least Shurika does, against two of their units. And we do really well into physical, and they're an all physical team. So we should have this one in the bag. Also cost advantage. However, they did have... Oh, they have two of the best TMRs in the game. Good job there. Glinting Armor and... Uh, was it Pride of the Sworn Sixth Wind, I think, is the... No, it's the Blade Stream. That's the name of the buff. Yep, Blade Stream is the name of the thing. Now, if we can remove re-raise from him, that would be really nice. Shalza can give us light resistance, which is going to be helpful against Cloud. Okay, Curse. Curse is a great way of dealing with Balo as well. Really, you don't want that re-raise to trigger. He is such a pushover before he comes back to life. And if you can stop that from happening, he just remains a pushover the whole time. And there we go. Uh, Shurika would have gone down, but she procced courage. I don't necessarily like that uh, Sephiroth ran off there, and it didn't matter very much. It also wasted one of my heals, but... 
I don't know. I think we I think we're in a pretty good place here. Also, Shalza has a version of full life. If we can keep her alive. And that looks like it might be hard. Oh no, she made it. Full life. I think Shurika can probably take him out with the LB now. She just kind of came to life in the midst of them. But she doesn't ever follow up damage. That's kind of a kind of a hurt for her. Okay, between the self-healing. Oh! Okay, Cloud One hit her. Sephiroth's got himself healed back up pretty well, but Mont's going to be hitting us hard. Oh! Oh! We do have the re-raise. I don't think we're going to win this, though. Nope. Nope, womp. Okay. Can't win them all. So, same team, and I'm going to be playing a couple of different teams into it on the guild battle map. First, let's start with Earth. Again, there's only one wind unit on here, but she makes half of the DPS for this team. So, she should be able to deal with an Earth team pretty well. And again, this is a cost-limited uh, event. So both teams are playing within that limit, which should kind of even up the playing field for her a bit. Already the DPSs are chewing through Mont, but not quite enough damage to keep him from getting that threshold heal and coming almost fully back to life. He hasn't got his LB off yet, which is unfortunate. He really needs the follow-up damage and the haste. Oh, speaking of follow-up damage, taken out by Shurika. <clears throat> Bradley doing some pretty decent damage. Sephiroth hit him, though. He definitely had that good comeback. But he's he's still doing pretty good damage, even potentially threatening Shurika's life total. But she was able to survive, Sephiroth was able to survive and power through that, and now... I don't really have any chance of bringing these characters back to life, and I'm down to just a healer, so they win this one. Kind of what you would have expected, but it worked out really well for them. This team is very powerful and limited. So, you would expect, especially with two fire units, that this team would do even better against ice. However, I gotta say, at the very least, Oldoa probably resists Shurika very well. Especially if I can get... Jaden has a single target protection buff that he can give to her that's very strong. That would give her huge resistances versus Shurika. Unfortunately, we've already lost a character here. We did get the re-raise off of Sephiroth, but we weren't able to do much damage to him. That being said, he wasn't able to break through Jaden's barrier, and it's not even the biggest one, so that's... That's, uh... Wow. Okay, another attack. Still haven't broken through the barrier. She didn't have to worry about the barrier at all, so she just bypassed it and ended up doing way more damage. The wind unit is doing more damage to the ice unit than the fire unit has. Fun. Uh, yeah. They're trying. They resisted Shurika's damage decently that time. Shurika is now <laughs> attacking Shalsa. Nice. The confusion really worked in our favor there. Oh, we got rid of Shurika. Shurika is off the board. But that would have been the easiest one for us to beat, as we do have the elemental advantage. But we have... Shulza are confused and down to one health, so their healer isn't healing. And now we have them down to Sephiroth. Oh, 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 Sep no re-raise. Just courage. We got him. We got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. With ice, of all things. Ain't life weird like that. All right. And now, let's see how that team does with the level 140 Shureka.
not quite good enough at 110. So let's see how much better she performs at 140. And unfortunately for me, I forgot to get data on her. <laughs> and ironically got data on the rest of the team, which should remain unchanged from the previous test. Whoops, that was a little backwards. She's even more reincarnated now, so I can't go back and tell you what those stats are. But enjoy this matchup and let's see if this team does better against Ice than its previous version did. And again, the only thing that's really changed here is Shurika being raised about 30 levels. Also, that uh, kind of Master Ability 3 really helps. But as you can see, you know, she's taking a lot of damage really early on, but that courage kept her in the game. See, she'd be gone. She wouldn't have made any impact on the game at all if that courage hadn't landed on her. And now she's really setting us up for a good place. I don't think she's going to survive, but you almost usually don't expect that character to survive. But hey, she's back now. Oh, damn, she took a lot of damage, but... Ah, uh, cleared somebody out, got some HP back. She's getting constant healing from Shalza, that's pretty good. <sighs> Still, pretty good results. Slightly weaker Sephiroth here, not really good synergies with him. Slightly weaker Uldoa, a little bit less HP, but roughly the same Shurika as we've been seeing. Maybe a little bit more magic, actually, than we've seen from her before. But again, this is going to be another party that is starting at 110, so we're not seeing her in her awkward 99 out of 120 form. This team, in, this team came in second overall in testing, coming both in second place on offense and fourth place on defense, with an average of 4.1 stars and 1.8 defense, which just generally put it above everything else. So, we have a tank and two solid DPSs. This is similar to the last team, except that we have Old Zoe here in place of Shalza. So we already know that Old Zoe and her aura can really help stack resistances on top of Shurika to the point where she can become really resistant to physical damage. And this is an all-physical team. It's a great sword team. These are uh, have been a very powerful team. I think it's finally starting to wane, and I think that it being good into anti-magic historically, and now not having as good of matchups into magic because of how much stronger the magic meta has gotten, is a little bit problematic for them. Um, so I think we've got a really good chance to win this one. But that being said, this team is a little bit awkward. It's not my favorite. Okay, we're taking damage pretty well. Shurika is nowhere near in range, but... A2 is healing up fairly nicely. She didn't heal up quite enough. We did remove re-raise. Okay, cool. And with the follow-up damage, we were able to get her down. Joom is cursed, so it's really going to put a hamper on her self-healing. But now it's down to a level 110 
Shurika versus both of these units together, I think that might be a problem. I think they might have broken through the line. Yep, 1 HP, good grief. Okay, what can her LD do to solve things? Well, that did pretty good damage. Pretty good follow-up. We've officially wasted the heal. And did some, some blowback damage, but uh, it wasn't enough to pull us through that fight. And again, it's hard to fight these established formations, especially when you have a level 110 character on your team. But let's see if a player who didn't change their default name, uh, Wiz, Giznita, there's a couple of different like default names for this game that you'll see a lot as you play. You also notice that I put the bow tie on Aldoa so that she moves a little bit slower. Maybe she can get more of her buffs off before coming into range. She's also going to kind of help pull my team back just a little bit. Maybe allow them to get a few more buffs off before getting into range. She does have that initial hate, so she is going to draw people over to her to buff her in a lot of cases. When applicable. Here comes the Slaughter. I think this is only going to line up with their Dario. Did not get the curse and healed back. Aw, oh, man. Really showing off the slash resistance there, Dario. Barely taking any damage. Also, they have a Blade Stream on their team as well, so they have gotten rid of my AP Restore. A little late, but uh, we didn't restore much HP with it, for sure. Better late than never. Okay, Aldoa has HP Restore. Sephiroth has Defense Penetration, done some damage. But it should be pretty trivial for Resnick to heal this and provide some support. What are you gonna do, Dario? Not move much, not too much damage, and Superfluous Healing. But you're getting your hate up. Shurik is moving, but not attacking, because she's out of buffs. Okay, Helena's LB. Oh, that hit. Once again, wasting some heals. In some ways, this team, like, doesn't need a healer. And you can kind of see that and why there. They're healing perfectly well on their own with their left to their own devices. The supportive skills come in handy though. The, uh, you know, cause she's not just healing them. She's removing their debuffs and increasing their debuff resistance or increasing their AOE resistance or giving them shields or stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it is kinda, being, being a frugally minded fox, watching them waste all these heals on fully healed characters just because of the sequence ability and they kinda have to feels like a bit of a waste but uh what could i speak of a waste it was enough to overwhelm me at this point like uh we're just not doing the damage we need to to chew through this and they have a very stubborn healer in the back row oof yeah but he can very easily hit them both He's not gonna do it though. Did he get the Berserk? He did not, but he did get the KO. And we're down. And now let's see how that team does with the level 140 Shureka. Okay, in this build we are a little bit closer to 10k HP, 112 agility as usual. Our accuracy here is lower at 107, but our magic actually is higher at 651, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 1651. So about 100 magic higher than we've had previously for her at 140.
little bit more power, a couple more levels, and a sure and uh, a Shelza. So we'll see how this works out. Although I have an issue with this team. This came in dead last, 10th out of 10. There were a lot of days where I couldn't find anyone using this team at all, but it did end up being a really good teachable moment to show this team and why it fails, because it seems like it has a lot of the things that Shurika would want. Here's the problem though. Even with Shurika in slot one gaining that one initial hate, Aldoa is gonna have more initial hate because she is an initial hate style tank, and therefore, the courage is never going to land on Shurika. To make matters worse, Strategist Aldoa already has a way of giving herself courage. She's not going to overlap these buffs, though, so this is just going to mean that she's going to skip that buff in her rotation because she already has courage. Which isn't great. Arguably, it makes for a weaker Aldoa, I think. Maybe slightly faster. But it also doesn't do the thing that you put Shalza on the team for, and that's to give a, a stop-loss prevention mechanism to Shurika. So if Shurika isn't getting courage out of this deal, this team fails. So let's see how that plays out. Shurika, at the very least, has a pretty good matchup against this team, so we'll see how that works out for them. But... After this, I'm going to show you a team that actually capitalizes on a lot of the same mechanics and benefits and does it even better. Also though, we couldn't hit Mont with what's probably our most accurate character, so that's just already a really bad sign for this match. So that ended poorly, but let's see a better way of doing a similar strategy with similar units. And that's going to be to use Helena instead of using the tanky Oldoa. And as you can see, that beats a lot of teams Unlimited right now at the very least. So this is another team that I could test in Limited, and as you're seeing, it beats a pretty wide variety of things. Oh, that's kind of a bad team con- I, All tanks is never a really good design. You're just- you're, you're not even slowing people down, necessarily. Because what really slows people down is taking out one of their team members. And with three tanks, you just have no opportunity to do that. This team came in ninth out of 10, so maybe not the standout, with an average of 3.1 stars and 1.3 defends, but... Woad of Stats does not track limited guild battle, and being a Shalza team, that's where this excels. So, I would say it performs well above that in the right format. And this is the right format, so let's see how it do for guild battle. Got a sleep on Sephiroth, which ended up just being a way to boost damage, because we hit him right after that. 
we're taking everybody on the front lines is taking a lot of damage they got a character down first but we have re-raise so might be able to retaliate well we put their shurika back to sleep and we dealt with her courage so we tore through that Helena healed us back up and almost took out Shalza. We almost took out their Shurika. But there we go. We managed to get through our defense team, which is another team that was ranked, ranked on here. I also wanted to see how well we would do against Kuja. Kuja can be really powerful on defense. This isn't necessarily one of the teams that I think he would do the best on, but Summer Resnick is a pretty strong, maybe like massively over strong healer. If we can line up any of our damage dealing characters with Engelbert though, we should be able to take him out pretty well. 12,000 HP, we should be able to hit that, especially with follow-up damage with Shurika, she ought to be able to deal with that. Between the two of them, they just cracked through her barrier. But now they have regen. Okay, Courage has been removed by Kuja. Engelbert's back. Kuja is still doing some massive damage to us. We got rid of his re-raise and took him down. Oh, wow. Engelbert took out Helena, but she's back with re-raise. Full HP, CT, and area attack uh, resistance up. Shalza is supporting Helena while Shurika is working the side. She's got Engelbert back down, and with Helena's help, she's got Summer Resnick down. We uh, cleared that team out pretty well. We had a little bit of trouble, but they never really overwhelmed us for all that long. They did get Helena kind of in the danger zone, though. This team has some really, really strong characters on it. And also a really strong MR healer. For, for a free unit, for a free healer, he is just really good really powerful for this type of format if you don't have someone like Sh uh, Shalza he can be a really good plug-and-play healer for a variety of teams especially if you're playing earth maybe ice water he can work pretty well in those elements I think he especially has some cool stuff that he can do with ice though or earth and ice combos Far Explosion didn't do nearly as much damage as I thought it would. That healed back for a lot more than I usually see him heal for. So very strong. Very strong Ash and Mont here. Did get some healing in. Trying to recover Helena. Trying to get her buffs up. <clears throat> but no. she uh, She's not going to make it through some more Mont. We, our follow-up damage is gone. Come on, we almost got through Mont. Nice. Oh, yes. Good job, Helena. Helena is back up, but we're now out of re-raise and full life. And damn. Just doing a lot of damage getting on my case. I don't know if we've got what, it, what it's going to take to get rid of this Joom before she gets rid of us. Because she's still healing back like at between every hit very easily. Yep, we tried, but that was the one that took us down. Really solid composition here. My friend, you did a good job. So let's take a look at that team and see what it do. Kind of what we expect from Shalza. A little bit low on HP for Helena, but over 2k magic. And... And again, hopefully this is going to get me consistent courage on Shurika. We also have a pretty physical matchup here, so that should be to our advantage. 
I think all of these characters work really, really well into physical, especially with uh, Shalza having a big AOE buff that gives protect. That can be pretty helpful for holding off characters like this. We're not really going to get a lot of advantage over the lightning elemental characters, but Shurika should have some advantage over Ash and Mont. Also, they don't... I mean, we don't either because we're using a Devout and two Black Mages, but they're using two Knights and a Greatsword or two Lightning Units and an Earth Unit, so they're... They're kind of off in a way that I think they're going to have a little bit of a hard time with their vision card base. I mean, I'm not saying that we haven't had with this team to a, to a small degree, but probably not nearly as bad as they're having. Oh, that was a good one. That was a really good buff for her to get off in this party. Got our HP absorb up, so Shurik is ready to go. Ooh, I think this is going to break, what, magic attack resistance. Wastes our heal, but also that reflect isn't going to do anything for her. But we now have magic damage up and regen, and one of their characters is almost on the way out. Okay, yeah, held out really well against that LB. And took out both of those characters. That was a one-shot on Squall. And an easy cleanup. Versus Astrius. Mont barely did any damage there. And almost got completely countered by Helena. Yep, no. <laughs> got so countered by Helena. I think maybe you were expecting to get countered by uh, by Shurika really, really heavily in this build, but no, no, Helena can get rid of that courage on you, my man. Um, so bad they had to leave. Maybe it was just a regular DC, though. Maybe it was nothing nefarious. So this appears to be a great sword team with a Cypher Kicker. Um, I've seen Cypher show up a lot on teams like this. You take kind of the best two units you got for a regular ar archetype, throw Cypher on that, especially if it was already slash based, because then he can chain, and uh, you get a good team. Cypher's been pretty well on a number of teams like that. He's been a very versatile and flexible unit. And he may have some issues, but he's certainly quite strong. Oh, I think they're both going to heal Helena. Yeah, it looks like it. Well, I guess she needed it. <laughs> it kept her alive, for, for at least. Alive long enough to get re-raised. So they've put a lot of effort into taking down Helena. Now she's going to get a chance to retaliate. Oh, one dodge. Oh, not a lot of damage there on the one that she hit, too. But he's got that man resistance. He's probably up in the air to hit Helena. She's probably trying to heal Helena, and I think she's coming up later in... T yeah. She's not going to do it before that damage hits, so if he takes her out, which is likely... That heal just isn't going to do anything. Oh, she didn't even make it to him. Yep, no. Even worse. Ooh. Okay. Nope, nope, not even... Nope. He just got plowed in that match. Wow. Welp. That team did all right. <laughs> And now, let's see how that team does with the level 140 Shureka.
I know this has been a longer one, but thank you all so much for tuning in. Remember to like and subscribe. It's a free-to-play option for YouTube. But also click that bell because I can be a foul-mouthed fox and sometimes it gets my content demonetized or deprioritized in the YouTube algorithm. So if you want to see every video, be sure to ring the bell. Also, let me know what you're thinking in the comments, who you're running, how they're working for you, kind of what your thoughts on this are. But also, while you're on your way down to the comments section, check out that link in the description. It's going to show you to all the parts of the Jackie Fox media universe, including a YouTube on the state of the world, a podcast that is similar books, both in fantasy, kind of near future fiction, that type of thing. Um, be sure to, you know, you can hit me up in the comments if you're curious more about the books or if any of those genres sound cool to you. I'd be happy to sell some books as a way of making money for the channel. But also, if you just want to help send some money to end some support and some thank yous for the time and effort pouring over data and pouring over uh, editing software for this type of content, then you can send some money as well. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.